I would like to call this October meeting of the Northampton Housing Authority to order. And so the secretary, would I ask the secretary to please call the roll? Yes, Madam Chair. Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Richards. Present. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Jones has notified us of his absence today. Commissioner Tarbutton has not logged in. Um, Jack, do you see her on at all? Oh, I just got a text message from her. Just a moment. She's signing on, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm going to admit her to the waiting room right now. And if you just give me a moment to have her uh, connect with um, audio. Uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, we're calling the roll. And um, I just want to uh, ask you if you're present. I am indeed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. thank you. Then it sounds like the first item then on the agenda is to ask for any resident comments. And I'll let Jack uh, mediate that process, please. Thank uh, you. Perfect. So the first person who potentially is a, a resident, I believe, is Casey. Yeah, I'm, can you call somebody else? I'm chewing my dinner right now. Sorry. Can you call another resident? Yep, absolutely. Um, and then the next person uh, I thought has just got back off. Um, last, the first name was Penelope. Uh, and then I have a Donna that's joining. Um, Donna, are you here for resident comment? I'm going to try that one more time. Donna, are you here for resident comment? It's uh, the audio is connecting, Jack. Uh, and then um, Tamina, who has their hand up. Are you a resident or a member of the public? I'm a resident. Okay. Um, just let us know your full name and then uh, where you're calling in from. I'm um, Tamina Gonzalez, and I live in Toby Manor. Okay, and now you can, um, you have two minutes to make your comment. Um, I just want to say something quick. I want to appreciate what you guys been doing for Northampton Housing, because I've been living in Northampton Housing for plus 10 year plus and I see past administrations and this administrations and I see how it used to be before you guys before it was drug problems it used to be it used to be police all the time in apartments and buildings getting drug rape problems addicts a lot of issues and now you guys change that you guys doing an outstanding job I know some people not happy, but this is you guys doing what you can with the budget you guys have and with the people you got. But I just want to say thank you because you guys do an outstanding job. This building, they look like private buildings. They look like private apartments. They don't look like public uh, government building. So I just want to say thank you to you, to Mrs. Lipper, to everybody, because you guys are doing an outstanding job. Thank you, Tamika. Thank you for your comment. Um, Donna, are you a resident? Are you looking to make a comment this evening? You're muted, Donna. Donna, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Still no, Donna. There we go. There yes. we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I am a tenant. And you... uh, my concern is Donna, um, Donna, um, could you just tell us what property you're from? Yes, I live at Salvo. Okay, thank you, Donna. Yes, thank you. I'm just concerned about the bed bug issue, and I know the laundry rooms are closed and mostly for the suffering of the individuals that are living 
with bed bugs in their apartments. I just, I'm just, it's just, I just don't know how they're doing it. I mean, I, it would be highly traumatic for me coming from a traumatic background. Um, so I just want, and the lack of laundry services, um, is that going to contribute to the problem? I just have questions that I don't know that anybody can answer. I've never had any before or joined the meetings. I can't see you, Jack. Can you see me? Yeah, we see you, Donna. <laughs> we see you. Okay. All right. Um, so that's really the most, what I wanted to say is that I really feel for those people and I'm praying I don't get any, and I'm praying for them as well. Because thank you for, thank you for um, your time, Donna. We will have someone from our staff get back to you. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Should I hang? No, you can listen to the meeting, Donna, if you want okay. to, or hang up if you want to. That's up to you. But we'll mute you now so that we can proceed on to the next person. Please thank stay you. for the meeting. Uh, Casey, do you want to? Have you finished eating? Are you ready for your comment? Yeah, I'm ready for my comment. I'm still eating. I'm slow. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm with Donna. We'd all like to know what's going on with the bed bugs. I'm most curious to know if there was a contingency plan in order before this happened. Because, you know, according just to my brief wiki search or Google, whatever, bed bugs are not uncommon in, in public housing. And what I know, I did not hear this right from other tenants that are at Salvo, that you're asking them to pay the expenses. For instance, people that get displaced because of the bed bugs, having to go to a hotel. One man that I know of had to go to a hotel because he was on hospice. His doctor wouldn't let him stay there. And the reason I found out about it is someone asked me if I could go get him some adult diapers. Now, this is alarming. This is not cool. And of course, I'm still bothered about the key policy. But besides that, I'd really like to know the contingency plan for these bed bugs. And I think everyone would like to know what's next. And I know you're not blaming people for this. You don't know where they came from. You don't know. I mean, are we blaming somebody for the pandemic? No, this is an epidemic in the pandemic, this bed bug. So we're all interested to know. Thank you. That's all. Donald. Casey. Um Casey. Yeah. Cheryl Cardinal, you're next on my screen. Would you like to make a comment? Uh, you're muted, Cheryl. No, I guess what Casey just said, everybody just wants information and information on preventative measures too, which not only saves us, but also saves NHA a lot of money. So, Thank you. Thank yeah. You for comment, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, Joella, do you want to make a resident comment tonight, or are you here just as a board member? Just as a board member, yeah. Well, I would like to, but I'd like to for the board uh, residents. I'd like to be last because they probably will say what I have to say. I, I think I've covered everyone. Do we know if Judy Okulski is a resident or a member of the public? Uh, I believe she spoke um, two meetings ago that she's a member of the public. Judy, can you just confirm for me that my memory serves me correctly? You're not a resident at Northampton Housing? Oh, Esther P. has her hand raised as well. Uh, Judy, you're muted. Um, and Esther, can you just let us know if you're a resident or a member of the public? Oh, hello? Hi, uh, yes. Are you a um, member hello? of the public or a resident? Um, um, I'm actually, I'm not a resident, but I'm reading something for a Salvo resident who asked me who, who couldn't be here tonight. Okay, Um, I think we're going to, we'll get back to you during public time, Esther. Um, this oh, okay, is, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. This is for resident only, and then we'll get, we'll allow you to read that um, during public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone, um, Judy, you didn't, I didn't get. Comment. Yeah, you're, you're accurate. I went and looked back at the record and she is, she's from uh, South Hadley. Okay, perfect. Or no, Belchertown, Belchertown. Um, okay, Joelle, I think you're the last person before we move to um, employee and then public. 
Yeah. All right, guys. Four weeks I'm going on with the uh, bed bugs. And I know at Savo House, I've seen the bed bug truck here for about two years, once a month. And I had not seen like a brochure, an educational material, a flyer, anything on the uh anything on about bed bugs. Of course you hear about it, but I have to just say too, and all the misery that I've been going through with these menacing hitchhiking vampires, I want to just say I apologize if I, because in my mind before it came to me, I kind of had a little bias that maybe came from people who were um houseless people or people who were congregating and doing doing things that were kind of unseelie, but this can happen to anyone. Uh, you can see Olympic Village, they just built a seven billion in the front Paris, a seven billion dollar Olympic infrastructure, and it's being there. Some people are a little freaking out in the world. I don't think it's the end of the world. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to survive. And I think this has happened two years ago. The press wasn't called. When it happened to me in mid-September, the press wasn't called. For me is when I got the heat treatment, fell asleep in this good makeshift bed, 30 hours straight, killed one on my arm while I was on the phone and immediately text saying they're here and get a really email blaming me saying I refuse to listen. I'm going to be charged double this. And it was just so hurtful. I'm going through this stuff, no sleep and catching COVID what is, is going on. And thank goodness when the press came, it never looks good. I don't like it when the press come here about drug issues. I'd like for us to be having really wonderful stuff because we are doing some wonderful stuff. But when they came, I learned so much from them. And I'm just saying housing, when we say we have something under control, when has there ever been an instructional video? You know, we have uh, residents of different learning and language issues. And it's like you get on the airplane. Sometimes I was a frequent fryer every day. They still not only gave me a pamphlet in every seat, but they did a verbal and a visual demonstration each and every time I did a plane, even if they saw me earlier in the day. So we got to keep up. We can do better with this stuff. You can turn this and make it into a negative and everybody's feelings are hurt. I don't know why this is informational and the news people cover things that I hadn't even thought about. I now know every size, every this, that, and I've been dealing with it. And I think it's kind of seems a little cruel and unusual to have to stay in the apartment with the bed bugs once you've been notified of the bed bugs. It's almost like if I said, guys, I got snakes in my apartment. And you say, oh, we're going to get those, uh, whoever you get, Crocodile Dundee or whoever get rid of snakes, but you have to stay in the building. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I have been researching it. It is something that is responsible for the landlord, but to come out knee jerk saying, it's your fault. You don't listen. You don't, that's not what, I'm, I have rental insurance and I wasn't covered. And they were even sympathetic and compassionate saying, I'm really sorry. We wish we could cover it. They weren't like, well, you did something wrong. They never said that when I got into accidents. Well, you shouldn't have been driving that night. Nobody would say that. If I did that as a teacher, when a kid came to me, I'd lose my license and of course my job. So I'm just saying, guys, we can put our heads together, our collective heads. Uh, we can work through this. We can come up with a thing, what we've done with it and how we're better for it. But I think now, and I think it's because of the press, we got this comprehensive cleaning and uh, I mean chemicals, but I, I don't know what's in the chemicals. And I did have a little reaction to it, but I'd like to know what's going on. And I'd like to know much. Maybe we could have 12 steps on cluttering. I'm learning that that's a factor as well. So I think we can use this as an opportunity to go forth or you can, or you can sit around, unfortunately, and want to blame everybody and blame everybody that gets us nowhere. So anyway, guys, exhausted four out, four weeks of no sleep, missing meetings like crazy, missing doctor's appointment, and people were wondering where I was. And when the press called, I answered. As a resident, not as a commissioner. And I'm taking my hat off. Thank you. Thank you, Joella. Um, so we do, much, have, we do have two other individuals join. Um, David Edwards, can you let us know if you're a resident? Hello, my name is David Edwards. And yes, I'm a resident at the Savile House. Uh, feel free to start your comment, Mr. Edwards. Well, I was a little surprised to see the newspapers and the comments in the paper. Uh, um, and I was a little concerned about Kara's comments about that the bed bugs started from people dumpster diving. And I was a little curious if she had knowledge of people dumpster diving, what precautions did she take to keep something from like this happening? And at what time do, did she have knowledge of people dumpster diving and bring stuff into the building? I think that made an unfair assumption of the people who live in this building. As um, and I would like to know when she first um had knowledge of people um 
burning stuff from the dumpsters into the building. And what precaution she took to keep from that causing the infiltration of a pest. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. There, there seems to be two of you. Um, are you both? Yes. Residents? Would you like to make a comment as well, sir? Just let us know. Yes, my name's Al Shagnon. I live at the Walter Stavel House. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing from other residents that people are soliciting to them, going to their apartment and telling them they have to pay $5,000 to clean their apartment. What is going on? Why is this happening? It's not right. We're stressing already. We don't know what's going on with these bed bugs because we're not getting the information we should. And it's sad. And I, I plan to do more about it. And uh, I hope the housing will do more to knowledge the people. Give them some information on the on the situation going on. Everybody in this building is stressing. The the person that got charged five thousand wanted to pay five thousand dollars. They said, "Oh, I ain't got five thousand dollars." Okay, twenty five hundred dollars. Boy, that's a quick jump. Why is housing bringing people to to people's apartment and charging them for? Queen in their apartment before the bed bugs that they didn't bring in. Uh, it's very sad. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chagnon. I do not see. Oh, I'm sorry. Heidi also has joined. Heidi, are you a resident or a better member of the public? Oh, me? No, no I'm. I already spoke. You're all set. Thank, Donna. You. Thank you. Oh, you're all set, Donna. We're going to mute you. Uh, Heidi, I don't know if you're looking to speak or not. Um, I don't have a way to ask you to unmute. If you would like to make she's, a comment. She's not would, muted, uh, Jack. She's unmuted. I don't think they're connected to audio. That's the problem. Um, okay. And then um, I'm just going to swing back to Esther P, who had the comp, the statement there they said they were giving from a resident. And I'm sorry, um, Esther P, could you please tell me the tell us the resident and the property they're associated with? Well, oh, hold on one sec. Didn't we just say that we would um have Esther P speak under public because she herself is a member of the public, even though she's reading a comment from a resident? Yeah, I thought I thought that's what we would do, Maureen. Do you agree, Chairperson? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, because then both okay. things are covered. I, I, I'm just, either way, the the statement gets read. But I thought you had said that, Jack. So I just didn't want you to, because I know that in between we have the opportunity for staff comments. Yeah. So, would you like me to go to staff first, Commissioner? I'm yeah. seeing that given that Heidi doesn't seem to have a comment, she seems unmuted but not able or does not wish to speak. So um, maybe Heidi, I don't know if there's any way to, there isn't another way to communicate. So I'm sorry, Heidi. Yeah, why don't you ask for staff comment? Um, are there any members of the staff who would like to make their comment this evening? You have the ability to unmute yourselves. Not seeing any, we will advance to public comment. Um, and it does look like we have at least two members of the public um, Esther and Judy, either of you can unmute if you'd like to make a comment. Hello? Hello? Yes, you're free to start, Esther. Hello, Esther. Hello. Um, yes, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just nervous. Um, I'm reading a statement from a resident, Salvo. His name's Ed Renquick. Um, can I start? Yes, please feel free. Uh, this, uh, I, I, must, I must say this also was dropped off at the office. Um, uh, I, th I believe it was Friday. I'm sorry, I'm just nervous. Um, dear Mrs. Leeper, please share this letter with the mayor of Northampton since she appointed the commissioner and with the chairman of the board of commissioners and read out loud to the board. 
It has come to my attention that a commissioner of the NHA Housing Board of Commissioners, Joella Tarbutton Springfield, recorded me without my permission and posted a video of it online via YouTube dated October 12, 2023. I specifically asked her not to record me. In this video, she clearly baited me, trying to say that NHA was charging me to pay for extermination, and I misunderstood that until I saw this horrible video. I met with the Housing Authority about concerns today and was, con and was informed that since the cleaning company only moved a case of insure, that I would not be charged. I contacted the Northampton Police Department and made a report and requested them to have her take it down. However, they told me I would have to file a civil complaint through the courts and I am currently going through chemo treatments and do not have the ability to take this on as an additional stress. I believe the Commonwealth of Massachusetts requires a two-party consent to record someone. And I clearly stated that I do not want to be recorded to this person. I am not sure what her agenda is, but it clearly is not in the best interest of me. It seems more of a personal agenda for herself, not the residents of the building at Salvo. I demand that as a board, you have her remove this video of me immediately. This has created a massive amount of undue stress in my life. I have enough I'm dealing with and do not need a person who is supposed to be in a trusted position of this authority to create additional stress in my life. Your immediate attention to this matter will be appreciated. Respectfully, Ed Renkowick. Thank you for letting me read this for him. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Esther. Um, Judy, would you like Thank to you. read your comment? Okay, and Judy has not muted herself, unmuted herself. And there's also someone I missed, um, Chairperson Carney. I'm sorry, they're just identified as Cell. I don't know if they're a member of the public or a resident. Um, you can unmute yourself before we close this if you are either of those. Uh, it doesn't look like they're unmuting. Chairperson Carney, I believe we're all set. Okay, thank you everybody for your comments. Um, then looks like we move right on then to the executive director's report. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Yes, this is the executive director's monthly summary. Our GPR was $231,938, uh, of which we've collected 174,584.15, which is 76%. Although ordinarily we would have issued notices to quit due to the holiday on Monday, um, I instructed staff to hold off until tomorrow to serve notices to quit. Um, I presume once those are served, the percentage collected will increase greatly. Number of annual recertifications for the current month, public housing had 104 and section eight had 52. Um, all but one of those uh, were completed. One is expired due to lack of um, third party verification coming back. Wait list, um, federal applicants has 96, two bedroom has 34, three bedroom has 23, four bedroom has two and section eight has 58. State applicants, family has 16,891. Elderly disabled has 4,397. Move outs, public housing had five and section eight had three. Move ins, public housing had five, section eight had three. And public housing has two families on notice. End of month vacant ready were four, vacant unready 10, with a total of 14, all of which are pre-leased. Number of make readies completed were six, all of which were rehabs. We took in 425 work orders. We began the month with 58. <clears throat> there were 42 for the prior month, I'm sorry. 42 for the prior month, we completed 325. And so we have 58 remaining. There was a concern brought up at the um, last 
uh, meeting about the new stoves at Savo not getting hot enough. The action taken is that we've been in regular talks with the state about this project and held the remaining floor uh, from installs until they were able to provide us with a solution. Two inspections by the contractor and the engineer have taken place since the last meeting to troubleshoot and address the issue, and we're still actively working to resolve the issue. Updates and events, the Housing Authority received 60 backpacks filled with school supplies from the Salvation Army, and we were pleased to announce that we have 49 backpacks uh, we gave 49 backpacks uh, to a total of 25 families at both Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights. We still have backpacks, so if there's a child that you know in need, please call the office or the resident services coordinator to request one. The RSC team has been working on gathering gently used donated clothing to assist parents in need of clothing for their children. It takes a village in Huntington graciously donated five bags worth of clothing for school-aged chil aged children. Oh from five to 17 years old. Um, items donated included t-shirts, pants, leggings, dresses, sweaters, and hoodies. Having these items on hand has made it easier for parents to access them as needed. I'm sorry, Jack, someone is uh, uh, not muted and it's making a lot of noise and feedback. Could you fix that for me, please? Uh, dresses, sweaters, and hoodies. Having these items on hand has made it easier for parents to access them as needed and mm -hmm. removes some of the stigma that may be attached to getting used clothing. We held a free back-to-school haircut event where our community partners at Salon 241 provided free haircuts to kids from 5 to 17 years of age. A total of eight haircuts were given between both sites uh, but from three hairstylists who donated their time and the salon also generously donated a total of 41 different hairstyling products, including dry shampoo, gel mousse, and hairbrushes for family to maintain their hairstyles. We'd like to give a, a personalized thank you to Salon 241 for helping the kids get ready for school in a very gracious manner. We participated in the 2023 Fire Safety Poster Contest with the HAI Group, and this year's Fire Prevention Week theme is Cooking Safety Starts With You. Pay attention to fire prevention. It's meant to reinforce the important steps residents can take to help reduce the risk of cooking fires. We provided refreshments and all the art supplies to make the posters, and we talked with those who came out about the fire prevention theme and ways that they can prevent cooking fires in their homes. It was both fun and educational. And lastly, we have been able to host one voter registration event and have another one scheduled next Monday at Hampshire Heights. Thank you, so and the Executive Director Report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I will allow, yes, I see Commissioner Tarbutton's hand. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question. Can you give uh, some of the clothes I'm sorry, where'd you say were those clothes that you had done that? Was that for the family housing? Yes, that was family housing for the children that were going back to school. Okay, is there anything to help people who have to go to the laundry, offsite laundry mats for the enormous laundry bills that they have to do because of the laundry room being closed down? I paid $8.50 for one load and I did two. So I was just wondering, what do you have? Or is there something available? And Anyone I, I don't know if you need that. Anyone that needs any kind of assistance should reach out to the resident services coordinator, meet with them and see what services are available. We also partner with the Salvation Army. So if there's anything available uh, for resident needs, the resident services coordinator can uh, fill them in. So I would recommend making an appointment with them. Do you, if they're not here, but one day a week, you just say you can just send it to them any day of the week and then they'll. I'll get to a building specific. If you if you call if you call the phone forwards to them wherever they are and they'll make an appointment with you based on your and their schedule. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm seeing no other commissioner with their hand raised or an indication question. Then I will move on then to the approval of the 2023 20, minutes and the October 20. 23 special meeting minutes oh. and i'll ask those uh separately I'll, I'll take your hand in a moment once the motion is made so is there a motion please to approve the august 2023 minutes motion to approve is there a second second oh, i think that was commissioner canso okay yes. thank you Okay, moved and seconded. Yes, your question, Commissioner uh, Tarbutton? 
Uh, well, actually, uh, additions, deletions, and corrections, please. Yeah, and I have a clarification point. Can you tell me which, are we doing this, a special meeting now? Or are we doing no, the- August. We're doing the August. You have two of them in your packet. Right, so I just didn't know which one they were, so thanks. Okay, Okay. there being no other additions, corrections, or deletions for the August 2023 uh, minutes, I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, approval of the August 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. C Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. You're muted. You're still muted. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Madam okay. Chair, five, uh, five yeas. Okay, thank you. That motion carries then. And so I'll ask similarly for the October special meeting, the budget meeting, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded to approve the special meeting, uh, special October meeting uh, for the um, budget. And are there any additions, corrections, deletions? And Commissioner Tarbutton, yes, which is yours. Yeah, I have a question, but I also have a point of clarification or order. Um, since the meeting in, in October 2nd was for the September meeting, which we did not have because we had a special meeting in October to deal with the budget. So does that mean we are one meeting short unless this meeting is for the September meeting and we're having another October meeting. So I'm a little confused by that. I don't know about that. So we'll look into it and get back to you. Okay. But I wanna know if there are any additions, corrections and deletions for the October special meeting that you've just read. Yes. Um, Thank you. Also, um, I don't know if um, there was, I, uh, there was a uh, open meeting violation. Some, uh, one of the staff mentioned a resident by name and I, if I mention a resident, I won't mention their name because I know that's a violation. So I'm wondering if that has been self-reported uh, or I if anyone else say, besides myself caught that. Let me, uh, let me uh, uh, clarify what we're talking about right now. We're talking about the minutes. Yeah. We can read them line by line. I'll read them. We can read the whole set of minutes line by line. And then you can tell us if you have additions, corrections, or deletions for the October special meeting of the budget. Do you need that? Do, we, do you need us to read that those no, minutes? I, thank you very much. I appreciate that you want to help me read it. I do appreciate that. But my question is, that's a still a, a meeting, even though it's a special meeting and it's still abiding by the laws with open meeting law. So in that sense, I don't see it written in here that that happened. I saw it in the video where it was mentioned. So um, I'm going to say no to that because that's a we were participating in ocean open meeting violation. And I don't have anything to do with that. Uh, I still don't understand it. Was that a, was that an addition, correction, or deletion that you? Well, just... you can put an addition in there if you want to put it in the minutes. But in the video, what is the included... addition you would? What is the addition you would like to make? Um, the ED mentioned a resident's name, and that is against open meeting violation. We're not to mention their name. Uh, 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 again, I don't I don't know if there. It's not in the minutes. Do you want to? Do you want to have a correction to the minutes by by a review from the video uh, to, for uh, um, mentioning a resident's name? I'm not sure what you're asking us to do right now. You don't know what I mean. Well, I well then I'll add that there was a open meeting violation in that meeting, and the minutes don't reflect that, but it did happen, and I'd like to because of it being. I'll I'll report it if it was okay. being self-reported. If there was an error, people didn't see that, but myself. But if you would like to put that on, a, make a note of it, that we're to put that on this record that that did happen. And since nobody's reporting it, I'll go ahead. Um, so I, I don't know whether you're asking if you want the board to vote on an addition to the meeting, meeting minutes that would state that executive director mentioned or because that, that's not, I think that if you were going to ask for that addition, 
you would have to ask for an addition and you would have to have the full context. So you may need to go back and watch the tape. I, I did. Okay. When you do, you need to give us that quote, that exact description, including the name that you would like us to add. And then we would vote on whether that was in fact what happened. So if you don't have that now, you feel free to bring that at a future meeting. <laughs> No, what I'll do is I'll report it to the attorney general's office. You're the chair. You'll get a copy of it. So then you can. And then I just wanted to add that 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 happened in the meeting and put that on the minutes that it was um, a violation to be uh, to be reported. I, I don't understand why it's so difficult. And I. I no, I don't I understand. Because usually what happens if you if you're telling us to make an addition, then right. I would ask the rest of the board if they would like to um vote on that addition but the addition needs to be spelled out more than what you're saying for example okay, you need well, to yeah you need to say exactly what the words will say uh, on the so. on the minutes and then the rest of the board would need to vote on that as an addition well there was an error made an open meeting violation error when the ed named a resident uh, a tenant by name first and last which is a violation and I, obviously, I was the only one who heard it, but I did hear it, and I did go over the videotape, but it's not on the meeting. So I'd like for the minutes to reflect that, uh, in addition, if you want to put it that way, uh, that that happened, and that will Are you be saying reported. it was not, it's not, you cannot hear the resident's name on the audio, on the video recording? Is that what you just said? No. Okay, I just misunderstood. I'm just asking you. So... I guess, uh, so I'm asking the rest of the board because I think that Commissioner Tarbutton would like to make an addition to the minutes, but I still am unclear as to what that addition will say. And usually if you just say, I would like to make the addition and then put quote, say what it is, end quote, and then we'll vote on whether that's an appropriate addition to the minute meeting. I'm not going to mention the tenant's name because to mention a name is an open meeting violation. I'm not going to do that. Would you like us to take this to look further into it and come back at the next meeting to consider this concern? Well, of course. Okay. All right. So, um, so the minutes have been uh, motion to approved and moved to approve and seconded. So I'll ask the chair. I mean, sorry, the secretary, please to call the roll. Sure. Approval of the October twenty twenty three special meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. No. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, four yeas and one nay. Okay, thank you. Well, that brings us up to new business then. Oh, I'm sorry, to unfinished business. And what we had was a few um, amendments to the board bylaws. Uh, I will ask the secretary to read each of these one at a time, and we'll take them up one at a time, please. We'll ask for a, a motion and a second for each. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Um, there was a motion made to amend, amend the by, board bylaws to include the code of conduct language from 760 CMR 4.03. I, I think the motion was not made. We're asked this is this is put onto the agenda for us to accept a motion yes. and a second. Yes. So I'll ask okay. if there is a member of the board who would like to make that motion, which would be to amend the bylaws to include the code of conduct language from 760 CMR 4.03. Is there a motion to approve or to amend? Motion to amend. Is there a second? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Commissioner Cancel, I thought, um, uh, made the motion, and Commissioner Brooks seconded. Do I have that correct, Commissioner Cancel? No, no, I think Commissioner Brooks just made the motion. Yeah. And I didn't hear the second. Is that you, Commissioner Cancel, or was it? No, no. I um, I just uh, I had a question about um, what specific language uh, we were adding to it because that's sort of a little yep. too general. Yeah. Okay. As soon as we get the motion in the second, then we can have some um, clarification and some questions. So okay. I heard. Uh, I'll I heard second. Commissioner I'll Brooks. second then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. So moved and seconded to amend. And I think that that question might be, 
if you look in your resources, it's actually, we're not going to add, I, I, I know it says to include, because this was actually my idea. I asked people to put, put these things in, you know, to give us ideas for how they wanted amendments to the bylaws. This one, I, I mean, I don't intend, I don't expect that we would attach and include a 31 page um, document, which is the entirety of the code of conduct for board members in the CMR. But I think it would be re probably better um, and, and where it says include the code of co conduct language, I think better would be to include the reference to the code of conduct language. So, um, so that would mean that we would um, amend the bylaws such that in whichever appropriate section that is, I can't remember where we have that in there now, but we would say um, uh, Northampton Housing Authority commissioners shall abide by the code of conduct as specified in 760 CMR 4.03. Because I know a lot of people, it sounds like Commissioner Cancel, maybe you didn't have a chance to look at those. It's in the board resources, but again, it's a long document. I think that it's important though, because there are, it, it um, really spells out exactly what the law requires of us and our conduct as commissioners. So, um, I guess I'll ask, we already had this moved and seconded to where it says to include the code of conduct. Maybe I'll ask then if those who mo moved and seconded, meaning Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner Cancel, might amend that to say include a reference to, because then that would be, that would not mean that our bylaws would be expanded by 31 pages. Does that okay. make sense to people? Okay. Does that I, make sense? Okay, so, and Commissioner Cancel, do you agree with that second? Um, you... Yeah, that sounds a little bit more specific because I, I did read um, everything that we got on the package, okay. um, but we already do have include a lot of uh, language from uh, the CMR uh, in our bylaws. So um, I didn't, I, um, yeah, so I, I, didn't, I didn't think we needed to make a motion to add you know, something like that, but um, better be safe than sorry. Madam okay. Chair, uh, if I may ask a question. Um, yes. So the motion has been changed to say to amend the board bylaws to adopt the code of conduct language from 760 CMR 403. Is that correct? What That's what it says now. And what we just amended it to was to include Refer a reference to the code of conduct. Yeah, because yeah, and then and or even an appendix, you know, if there's something because that could be linked then, since most po folks look at that electronically. Even if there was even if there was a link to it at the appendix of our bylaws, that would be something that then would allow people to look and then find exactly if they're not familiar with those. Does that sound? So, so in terms of the reference, um, I don't have the I don't have the copy of the bylaws with me right now, but you, the appropriate spot there would be under duties of commissioners, and I don't know yeah. which number that is in your in the bylaw document that you might have in front of you. Uh, that's Article Three, Madam Chair, composition duties and responsibilities of the Board of Commissioners. Right, right. If there were a a, a, um, a an inclusion then of saying, as I just said, Northampton Housing Authority commissioners shall abide by the code of conduct as specified in 760 CMR 4.03, that could, and then the bylaws would be renumbered after that. That would be like a number one. So that would go, um, if you want them to be specific, it would be article three, uh, section two, duties of the board, it would become um, letter D as in, um, no, I'm sorry, it would be section three. So it's, let me, uh, article three, composition, duties, and responsibilities of board commissioner, section 
three duties of the board of commissioners. And right now there's just one paragraph. So it would, that would change to number one and number two would, I, I would add number two, um, uh, abide, abide by the code of conduct language from 760 CMR 403. Is that accurate, Madam Chair? That's how I, that's how I understand it. I mean, that's what we just said. We were just, what you were just clarifying was where exactly in the written bylaws we have now it would be placed. So that's, right. that's a good clarification. Okay, it, so section three, I mean, article three, uh, section three, number three, and it would become number two. To people, okay, I see, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Cantell and then Commissioner Tavard. Yes, please. Oh, your hand is raised unless you had nothing more. Yeah, no, right. sorry. I didn't I didn't lower my hand. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Well, I, I, I agree with that. I just want I heard the word appendix and then my, my ears lit up because I do um I, I've been actually in communication with somebody in the, uh in Hadley and they're re, they're refining their uh, code of conduct for commissioners and I thought it was really great. And it is a lengthy document. I haven't had a chance in this last month to deal with it. But I do like to include that when we have elections for chair that the, uh, uh, the ED is not a part of it, that we don't call and trash talk someone and call them and tell them about our votes. I think that's an appendix, that that's something that needs to be done and put into there. So I would like to be a part of that. I don't know if you're going to append it or not, but there's just, uh, that it's a no, separate actually, entity. No, actually, no, I'm sorry, just, what? Sorry, Commissioner Tarbutton, you're talking about something that's not really of these, um, uh, that's not related to the, Board of Commissioners Code of Conduct language, which is what we're talking about now. So you're just talking, talking about language, about, not about- You're behavior. talking about wanting to add another directive to the executive director to not trash talk people, whatever it is that you said. And that's not something that- No, I said commissioners. Right I'm talking about commissioners. I'm talking about commissioners. I'm, I'm talking okay, about some then you need to work. You would need to word what you're about to say right now because it's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. So I thought we were talking about the code else, of conduct for commissioners. Are we not? We don't just, have, it's not part of the code of conduct for commissioners. We're only talking about the very specific language of the CMR. I understand that, but did I not hear the word appendix that you were talking about just to that document, that 31 document? I said that it was possible it could be included and referenced in an well, appendix. That, that's what I'm that's speaking not, to. That's what I'm no, speaking to. No, you're speaking to an appendix, of, but you're speaking to put something else in the appendix. Actually, I'm not. I, 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 it's a 31. I, I don't understand why it seems so be confusion. If we're talking about language and conduct of commissioners, that includes commissioners not trash talking another commissioner, not trying to tell us who to vote for and who not to vote for. That should be in there because it happened. I understand, but that's not what we're voting on right okay. now. Okay, well, vote on what you want to, but I would like for the record to show that I tried to include that, but we're not voting on it. You, you can still try to include that by sending that to me in the language of an amendment sure. and then asking me to put it on the agenda for next meet next well, I'm month. I'm doing meeting. it right now. I just put it in perfectly. So thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. It's only because of open meeting law that we're not allowed to discuss on discuss items that aren't already on the agenda. I understand what you're trying to say. And thank you for your patience. So is there any more discussion about the reference? to the code of conduct language from the 760 CMR 4.03 amendment as we just worded it. Then I'll ask the, I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, but I think uh, the secretary might is muted. Yeah. Yes, uh, motion to amend the bylaws to add uh, under um, three, three and adding one and two, to reflect reference to the code of conduct language from 760 CMR 4.03. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Com thank you, uh, Chairperson Carney. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. You're muted. I'm going to say no until we can include the appendix. Okay, um, uh, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, that's four yeas and one nay. Okay, thank you. 
So the second item we have under this was one offered an idea of, uh, actually the next two were offered by um, Commissioner Cancel, but we'll still officially ask for a motion and second on these. The first one being amend the bylaws to reinstate governance and policy committee. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded to amend the bylaws to reinstate the governance and policy committee. So uh, you typically, the maker of the motion can speak first. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Cancel. Uh, if you want to speak on, if you want to speak to the motion, to your motion. Uh, yes, um, I do. Uh, my mouse is uh, freezing up now, though, because I wanted to uh, uh, bring up the, the reasons why I thought it was important to um, uh, to bring those up. And it's, and it's um, uh, precisely for some of the stuff that we're experiencing here tonight. Um, I believe our um, uh, uh, our subcommittees can uh, spend time in uh, ironing out and kind of looking at some of these things that um, we don't necessarily have time to dedicate hour or two hours at special meetings, but that are, are important and that also um, give other folks an opportunity who want to serve and, um, and serve in a productive way that um, helps uh, um, carry the organization forward, um, these subcommittees um, are really helpful for that. Uh, for instance, the um, the uh, subcommittee for um, the one that we're voting on right now is which one again? I'm, I'm just stuck. I'm froze. All I can see is you folks. Oh, right? I'm sorry. It's the yeah. one that you, it's the governance and policy <laughs> committee. So yeah, for instance, the governor and policy uh, uh, subcommittee um, used to deal with board orientation. Clearly, we could use uh, 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 more of that. Um, developing recommendations and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the executive director, nominating officers for the annual meeting, which I'm not sure it's that relevant anymore, um, or um, and review and make revisions of the bylaws, which is what we're doing here today as necessary and respond to other personnel uh, issues that are not covered by the grievance committee. So that that subcommittee, you know, uh, was charged uh, quite a bit. Um, and I believe this is work that could be done on a subcommittee that could be reported to the regular meeting uh, so that, you know, we can work on this. I know I, I remember uh, before I came on board, just before I came on board, there were some revisions to the board and a group of folks, I believe um, Commissioner Richards was part of them, um, worked on, uh, on, on revising the bylaws and then presenting it to the board and then the board uh, voted on them. So that's pretty much uh, my rationale for, um, for asking for that to be um, reinstated um, in addition to again other board members having an opportunity to participate in a productive way outside of um, uh, our regular monthly meetings. Okay, thank you. I see Commissioner Richards and then Commissioner Tarbuck. Yes, um, just broadly I just want to give a little history on uh, why it was eliminated in the first place. Uh, number one because of the new revised open meeting law, which required us to have, if there was a quorum at every meeting uh, outside of our board meeting, uh, to have uh, minutes and to post it. And um, for instance, I know we're not talking about finance, but I don't know how we could have a finance committee meeting without our fee accountant. So it added a lot of expense uh, to the uh, uh, authority. And uh, I think what we decided at the time was that better do our business all out in public than to have committees. 
in addition to that, uh, except for the committees that are um, that we must have by law. In addition to that, at our trainings, uh, it has been recommended that we do not have committees for some of those same reasons, I think. So that's just a little history on it to open the discussion. Okay, Commissioner Tarbutton, and then yeah. uh, Secretary Lieber. Did, Commissioner did Tarbutton? Lieber? Commissioner Tarbutton and then Secretary Leeper. Okay, yes, I wanted to, to speak on that because I was trying to see exactly when and where it was written and I have it right here. Sorry, I keep looking down, I'm going over my, where it was put in with these bylaws of these committees to, because it's it's hard for me to say what, what was reinstated because I'm not sure why it was, uh, it was paused and I don't see any amendment where that was the case with that. So where they were uh, not being utilized. And I don't know, uh, I it, it, I think a former chair or commissioner um, for explaining that, but I don't know who voted for that. I've been here three years and I wasn't a part of of that. And um, so the whole new laws and all, all of that stuff, I'm not quite familiar with, but I just know our bylaws tell us to have a committee. And I think with us as divided as we are, because some of you know each other and some of us don't, what a way to include people is to have committees. And so, and that would stop some of the meetings for, for going on and some of the questions. I would rather have that so I could be a part of this group and not tell people and not be told what to vote on and to vote this way. I don't wanna go along and get along, I wanna know. And so I think that why it was suspended, I don't see it written down here, the amended, amendment and the date to even reinstate it. So I just thought it wasn't honored. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, Commissioner, I'm sorry, uh, Secretary Leeper, please. Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to read the board an email that came from the Attorney General's office on Thursday, October 5th, 2023 at 1.52 p.m., wherein I asked our attorney to reach out to them regarding um, the fact that we have to have a person, I mean, a, a grievance hearing and whether that had to have minutes taken and whether it needed to have a posting in regards to the OML. Um, the email to them say, stated, good afternoon, my name is uh, Thomas O'Connor, I'm the attorney for the Northampton Housing Authority, and I have an OML question for you. Our board of commissioners is made up of seven people. Pursuant to our bylaws, there are two committees that are selected each year at our annual meeting, a grievance subcommittee and personnel subcommittee. Each contains two commissioners. The grievance subcommittee has a third party uh, selected from the community. The personnel subcommittee does not. The personnel subcommittee hears grievances from employees and the grievance subcommittee hears grievances from residents. Each committee rarely meets once per year at most. Recently, we had a personnel subcommittee hearing. In the past, we did not follow OML requirements for these hearings, but in this instance, we did, posting the meeting, taking minutes, et cetera. We are scheduled to have a grievance subcommittee hearing for a tenant that relates to a matter that they feel was handled incorrectly by the NHA. The hearing will have two commissioners and a third party. As I said above in the past, we have not followed OML for these hearings. My question is, do we need to follow the OML requirements for this hearing? And going forward, is it necessary for us to follow OML for any subcommittee hearings that will happen infrequently in the future? Thank you. Their response was as follows. Good afternoon, Attorney O'Connor. Thank you for contacting the division. The open meeting law defines subcommittee as any multiple member body created to advise or make recommendations to a public body. General law, chapter 30A, subsection 18, a public body forms a subcommittee when the body formally authorizes multiple members of the public body to advise or make recommendations to the public body. Whether a subcommittee was created hinges on the public body's action and whether it intended to create a multiple member body or whether it intended to assign the task to one person. Even if another member of the public body subsequently volunteers to assist. Here, it sounds like the parent body's bylaws require that the public body create the two different subcommittees and appoint members to those committees. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Therefore, it appears that the pu parent public body created two subcommittees and thus would be subsequent to the open meeting law. Subcommittees are public bodies in their own right. 
which means they must follow all of the open meeting law requirements applicable to public bodies. The quorum of a subcommittee is a simple majority of the members of the subcommittee. Therefore, if you have a subcommittee of two or three members, a quorum is two, which means that at any time two members of a subcommittee get together and discuss business, subcommittee business, they must post a notice and create minutes. The open meeting law does not carve out an exception to the definition of deliberation for discussions that do not result in a decision or vote. Any communication among a quorum of a public body on matters that are pending or will come before it and within the body's jurisdiction is considered deliberation. And any type of deliberation must occur during the uh, properly posted meeting. That being said, Madam Chair, uh, during Attorney Driscoll, both of Attorney Driscoll's trainings, um, he indicated that it was um, uh, not a good idea to have committees. Um, and in, uh, I believe it was, 2021 or 2022 i'd have to look it up um, it was uh it was decided by the board to remove um all the committees that weren't required by law um which included the governance and policy committee and the finance committee uh to um to alleviate that uh whole uh, potential of OML and the extra administrative burden that it would put on um, the housing authority. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, yeah, before I go back to you, Commissioner Tarbutton, I wanted to see if there's anyone else. Okay, then I'll go to Commissioner Tarbutton and then Commissioner Cantel. Actually, I'd like to have uh, Commissioner Cantel go before me. Well, no, I, I'm going to. Um, he yeah, has like, I'm, I'm looking for. Well, okay. Well, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Commissioner. If you don't mind, Commissioner Cantell, go ahead now. Thank then. you. We'll go back to Commissioner Tarbutton. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I actually uh, was here uh, when um, when these uh, committees were um, taken out of our bylaws, and at the time, it actually made perfect sense to me because um, it was mentioned that uh, the bylaw these uh, subcommittees weren't meeting or doing anything, anyways, um, and in that. In, in that sense, to me, it made sense for us to um, uh, take them out of our bylaws. Uh, but I also remember us uh, saying, you know, this is something that we could uh, review in the future again. And so the future is here now and we're reviewing it. And again, the, the reasons why I mentioned uh, that, uh, it, by the way, I don't think the new o OML uh, laws um, should be a reason for us not to have these. Again, given all the issues that we've had as a board in the last uh, you know, few months, um, these actually uh, uh, reactivating these committees actually make a lot more sense now than ever. Uh, again, for, for the sake of saving time in our regular meetings, for the sake of more participation for folks that usually uh, uh, can't participate. Um, uh, for instance, if the executive committee, uh, and I don't think I, uh, no, we can't talk about that because I, I, I did not ask for that to be reinstated, right? It was, we're talking about the governance and policy committee. Um, and um, so, I mean, again, there's a, again, let me just, uh, <laughs> reiterate the things that we're talking about in the governance and policy committees, board orientation. These, this, these are the things that this committee would, would uh, undertake. Board orientation, developing policy recommendations, developing and carrying out a plan and process for evaluating the ED, nominating officers for the annual meeting, which I would like to get a little um, clarification on that um, as to how that was done before. Um, and then review and make revisions of the bylaws as necessary. So we would have a body, a subcommittee that would be looking at these as time passes and as things change, um, our bylaws will need to reflect those changes and those um, and having extra people to look at that um, and then uh, report back to the board. Um, I think it's of great importance, um, even if it's if it means taking extra um, uh, uh, having to uh, take extra time to do to post the meetings or having, uh, for instance, um, 
and uh, 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 as Marilyn mentioned earlier uh, in the finance committee, which we're going to talk about next, having that extra person if needed. Um, but um, again, I just I I think it's important that we um, dedicate time, extra time into this rather than our, our regular meetings. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Tarbutton, please. And you're muted, please unmute. You're muted, Joella, you're muted. All right, sorry, thank you guys. Did I do that? <laughs> well, I think it is important that we do have that. First of all, you know, it is a bonding process. Um, I'm in another committee and writing bylaws and, and, and committee updates was the most gratifying thing ever. It's also a way of getting together. And once you go over it, you kind of learn it as opposed to this is how it was. And I think Hansel is right. I may be in the commissioner for three years, but I've been going to meetings since I got here over a decade and it was really never very clear. And I think when we're talking about, because then I think that would stop some of the confusions and suspicions that are going on, particularly where I'm coming from. Like, for example, I heard on one of the meetings with the grievance committee. So if you say we've only had one grievance, whereas I think as a resident that most people, it's, it's it's about the law, so I, I prefer not to be interrupted. I'm sorry, it's a cultural thing of looping conversation, but it's a, most people here don't even know anything about it. So you can easily say we don't have it, but here with public housing notice 2022-07 from Ben Stone at the time, it was still uh, uh, DHCD. It said, for example, that you have to have notices. I asked the ED about notices and she said she keeps it in her office and they come to her, but that's not what it says here. It says that, and I just sent it to you, Chair, uh, Madam Chair, it says that you have to um, post them, copies of the grievance committee, including information on how to initiate a grievance and the names of the grievance procedure, hearings, officers, notice of the right to file an MCAD. It has all of this stuff that I've never seen. I've never seen one flyer on it in the time that I've been here. I did send an email once to Commissioner Brooks because he's been here forever if he's ever seen it. So you can't say, well, I have it in my office and come talk to me and then then usually it's not. And then uh, Commissioner, because I, when I brought it up to you before, Commissioner um, uh, Carney, you said, well, I see it on the website and it was 20 minutes to find, but the average resident is not that easy for them to find. So you and I can say that and it makes sense, but I'm talking about the average resident because I try to see both lenses here and to say 99.9% .9 of the cases, that's why you don't have grievance. I say it's because they don't know anything about it. And that's one way of loopy -de loop of the rule. And the rule clearly says, I sent it to you, Carney, uh, Commissioner Carney, that you have to post that. And the office and the names and contacts of the LHA executive director and all LHA board members and staff. Point of order. It has it all right here. Yeah, I, I, I'm going point to ask, of order. I, I understand. And Commissioner Tarbutton, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you continue on, even though I hear you talking about the grievance committee. And I right. just ask you to please limit your comments to the particular committee we're talking about, which, which is the which committee are you talking about? The one you that we're the most the, the motion that's on the floor. OK, did it not include the grievance? It was just uh, not finance. No, I'll grievance. explain again. The motion Thank on you. the floor is to reinstate the governance and uh, bylaws committee. That's what we're talking about now, please. And I, do you have further to say on that, or can I go on? Well, to the I, well, I guess if we're if we're separating the uh, the governors, which doesn't include the the grievance, I could see that then. Okay, so you're finished. Are you finished, Commissioner Tarbutton? Mouth is closed. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Okay, I don't see any other commissioners, so I, I will then, um, <clears throat> before we call the roll, I'll, I'm going to give my my opinion on this, and that is that my sense is that we need to do more as an entire board rather than to break off into committees of two. I don't know that it will help us in our board development if we're going off with, uh, for example, uh, Commissioner Brooks and I, for example, or Commissioner Cancel and I, or Commissioner Cancel and Commissioner Tarbutton, or any two go off and 
themselves, have talked and read through the bylaws. I think that it's a much more productive exercise for us to do this together as a board. I think we need to work together as a board. We're, we're doing this right now. We're taking up this particular uh, item, which is an amendment to the bylaws, and we're discussing it. We're discussing what the reasons were that it was um, originally put in the bylaws and then when it came out of the bylaws and the reasons stated then. I know that twice when I was at uh, the trainings with um, Attorney Driscoll, I asked this question about committees. I asked in January and I asked again when we had our recent, when we had our, our recent training. And he was very clear, we are a small board, we're only seven people. And in the interests of the public and in the interests of transparency and having everything that the public sees, because the public is not gonna go to the bylaws committee, whether it's posted or not. The public deserves to see us working together and working these things through. Oops, I see that something just no, happened. No, 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 disconnect that one, Jack, disconnect that one. Hey, listen here. We need to bring more illegal immigrants into into our cities. That's what we need to do. Okay. I'm sorry. Is somebody speaking? Uh, so we we were bombed uh, again. Oh, we were just being bombed. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm bombed. sorry to everybody on here. Somebody from the public just interrupted. Wasn't me. Okay, I know it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, um, where was I? I was saying that I was speaking about. The reasons that I think is really just about transparency, and I think it's better for us as a board to have have productive meetings. I feel like tonight we're able to discuss things, and there's nothing. If there is something that someone, uh, uh, the bylaws can be amended in any meeting, and if there's something that comes up that needs a change and that uh, uh, any particular commissioner would like us to discuss. We can do that, whether that's policy-wise or, or anything else. Those are things that we can bring to the entire board. I don't think that it serves us better to break off two people here and two people there and then bring that back. That's my opinion on it. And so that's why I understood the reasoning when I read it through. I understood the reasoning when Jeff Dreskel explained it. And I think in the spirit of transparency even it's better for us to work together and take these up as an entire as a whole board and so for those reasons i would object to this i understand the principle i understand entirely what commissioner cancel is trying to get at here in terms of more involvement and i think that we can do that as an entire board better than we could if we break off into pairs into these other committees. That's my that's my opinion. I wanted to have the last word, <laughs> but it doesn't look like I'm going to because Commissioner Tarbutton wants it. But is there anyone else before Commissioner? Because Commissioner Tarbutton has spoken twice, so I'll ask if Commissioner Brooks, Commissioner Richards, do you have anything else before I go back to Commissioner Tarbutton? And then this will be the last. I, I have, uh, you know. Um, yes, please. You know, I was involved in the, in, the, in in setting up. Um, a couple of subcommittees um, when I was in my first term and and those two committees or those two subcommittees involved Marilyn and Emily um, Lawford and they did remarkable work. They did a ton of work um, that um, they uh, finished, when they finished working on it, they gave it to the board and we voted it in and it, and we bypassed all the time, as Edgar has talked about, um, all the time that we spend in a regular meeting um, uh, bringing all these things up. So um, that's the only reason why I, I think a two member um, uh, board or subcommittee has worked well in the past here. Madam Chair, I'd like to know if um, uh, Attorney O'Connor would be willing to um, give you all the legal opinion on this, and if, when you're ready, you could call on him for that. Thank you. Okay. I see uh, Commissioner Richards, 
And then I'll go to um, Attorney O'Connor and then back to Commissioner Tarbutton. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, oh, oh yes, Tarbutton uh, first and then to Commissioner O'Connor. What? Where am I in this? Right now. You're right now. Oh. <laughs> and then okay. and then I'll ask if these will be, after your I'll ask if these will be the final remarks from Commissioner Tarbutton and Commissioner Cancel. And then I'll ask for Commissioner, I'm sorry, for Attorney O'Connor to then offer some remarks. So Commissioner Richards, please. Yes, I just wanted to say that um I don't want to dismiss any of um Commissioner Cancel's uh, uh, issues because I think he's absolutely spot on on many of them. The question is, do we need to have subcommittees in our bylaws to work together as a group? And I, I don't think that we do. I also think that we did a lot of things in the past that because of the new restraints of the open meeting law, we really can't do now. So, oh, the last remark I wanted to make was about as chair, uh, you that uh, commissioner, commissioner and chairperson Carney could do ad hoc committees as as needed or as so indicated. So that's my take on it. I will Thank be you. voting. No, yeah. Commissioner Tarbutton and then Commissioner Cancel. Yeah. Well, I don't know, uh, Commissioner, uh, Madam uh, Chair, I don't know why it's on that number. It has to be two. It has to be two. It's interesting because I took uh, Attorney Driscoll's class for a year and a half. And uh, when there was a, one one LHA didn't invite him, he was just doing it over the overall stuff. And um, and he was remarking that we had seven people because that's large as opposed to five. I mean, he had to go look and see if that's true. So I'm getting a little mixed thing like this is small. We get to the small. I'm just saying also we can think of a culture too. If somebody, even one person, and if it wasn't me, but someone saying, I would like to feel a part of this group and not, I feel again, it's gonna always be that four against two, no matter what, that's not very inclusive. So I see commissioner and myself have been saying, and he says it more eloquently me saying, let's figure out a way to get us all involved. And we're like, no, 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 no. We've done it this way. We did this because of this. And that's not really being, I feel, inclusive it is like it's the way it is and it's going to be like this well someone did it before well that, that most people go, i i i i thought i heard a uh, commissioner former chair say that elizabeth silver helped right with the bylaws and all that stuff too so i'm here now with just two other people i haven't seen one committee as it is and i think as commissioner Cancel said reason why they agreed to do it because it wasn't working very well and not many people were participating. So it said, go to the group. And I think when you're saying, uh, uh, not two, let's everybody, I would like for, I don't mind if it's two, three, it doesn't have to be regimented. It's just a way to include everyone. And I just don't know if I can say it any differently that that can get across. Thanks. Thank you so much. And Commissioner Cancel. Yeah, um, this is uh, this is a lot about about um, uh, wanting to be um, inclusive and um, and um, more than anything efficient. Um, I remember when the subcommittee that worked on the policy on the on the bylaws for the Northampton Housing Authority that. Elizabeth Silver was a part of and Marilyn Richards. Um, the amazing work they did. And it's, I don't think it's the type of stuff that we want to be spending time at regular meetings. If you've got people that are willing to do this, this work and look at it, it doesn't mean that that body is going to vote on anything, but at least they can work on a lot of the stuff to be able to present to the, um, to the board. Um, a lot better than I'm um, 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 uh, uh, arguing today um, as to you know why these things are important. But um, again, I think it's extremely important that we dedicate um, additional time uh, to these matters. And I don't think um, on a regular at the regular monthly meeting, especially how long some of our meetings are, especially after um, 
uh, uh, public comment and residents comment, it, it's it it would be a lot more efficient uh, if we have these um, these these bodies doing the extra work um, that needs to be done. So um, and again, yes, it has it has a lot to do with uh, inclusion. Uh, for instance, I've been wanting to take part on uh, these types of ad hocs uh, since I started on this board and. Um, I feel like I can keep getting denied time after time. I, I just want to go to work. <laughs> That's all I want to do is go to work and do something productive for this organization other than um, than uh, the many disagreements that we you know could have sometimes. Um, I know there are ways that uh, we have a lot of things in common that we can um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, capitalize on. So, yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. Then I will ask then for a final remarks from Attorney O'Connor, please. Thank you. I think I'm, I'm unmuted. Um, some excellent points and counterpoints being made. Um, as the housing authority's attorney, my only concern here is um, the open meeting laws. And unfortunately, we've seen recently, despite best efforts, um, we've violated them twice. And it certainly wasn't anything intentional. And they were very de minimis violations, but they were violations nonetheless. And uh, that lengthy response we got from the Attorney General's office, office makes it clear as a bell that these subcommittees would definitely be subject to the open meeting laws. So that would be my biggest concern is um, the potential for open meeting law violations, particularly as we've recently seen how easy, unfortunately, it is to violate those laws. So that's that's my biggest concern. OK, um, so no, I'm not going to go back again, Commissioner Tarbutton. Um, then I will ask, I think that I've finished saying everything. There's nothing more that I need to say, except that I'll just reiterate that my concern, likewise, as the attorney just mentioned, is about the open meeting law. And it's also a concern for transparency. Like, I don't think the public will be much involved at all in these subcommittees because they won't be really informed. And I think they deserve to hear us kind of work out whatever these policy discussions we might have or bylaw discussions, the reasonings behind that, I think it's better for the public. And I am concerned that when um, a two person committee then is even anywhere, ever anywhere else, by virtue of them being together and seen speaking, the question can be, you know, it could be an open meeting law question as to whether or not, you know, they were talking anything related to what's on their respective subcommittee and it's not posted for the public. So I, I'm, I'm more concerned about that. I do, I do think that we will all have opportunities to bring, for example, any one of us could bring an entire list and we could, we wouldn't need to necessarily, we would need to understand the reasoning for each of these amendments to bylaws or policy change but we would have the discussion in open public session regarding it. So for those reasons and not because I disagree and, uh, and don't appreciate the spirit in which they're given, which is as Commissioner Cancel said, you know, I wanna work, let's get to work, let's work together. I really do think that we need to, we need to show in the public that we can work together as a board before we break off into committees that I don't think that we really need right now. I think once, you know, if the public sees us working together as a board, that in and itself will be good for everyone, for this board and also for the community. I'm gonna go ahead now and ask for the <clears throat> secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Chairperson Carney, uh, to amend the bylaws and reinstate the governance and policy committee. No. Chair per, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes, of course. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton.
Sorry. Yes. Commissioner Richards. No. Okay. Madam Chair, that's three yeas and two nays and one absent. I don't oh, okay. know if it's a if it carries or not. Attorney yes, O'Connor. That carries. That carries. Yeah. So now there will be a and that it'll be incumbent upon the chair to um to name a governance and bylaws committee. And that will be something that I will talk to folks about at a later date. So we'll move on to the next item, which is to uh, reinstate a finance committee. Uh, is there a motion? Does someone want to put that motion on the table? So moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? And second, a second. Sorry. Moved and seconded. And so, Commissioner Cancel, would you like to speak to this motion? Uh, sure. Um, very much in the same spirit of um, the um, uh, the previous motion. Um, uh, as I was reviewing the bylaws, um, uh, actually a couple, few months ago I, at this point, um, I noticed that there is uh, certainly uh, work to that could be done outside of our, our regular meetings. Uh, for instance, our finance committee, um, as it was formally um, uh, in place, uh, had two board members, uh, one of which should be the treasurer, who would serve as the committee chair, um, and uh, would meet as often as necessary to properly conduct the financial affairs of the housing authority. The committee is responsible for preparing housing authority budgets in conjunction with the executive director, participating in the annual audit, um, and listen to the language, participating in the annual audit in conjunction with the independent private auditor, reviewing financials with the executive director prior to each board meeting, presenting financials to the board at each board meeting, participate in HUD and DHCD reviews, and any other duties that are necessary to ensure that the fiduciary responsibilities of the housing authority and board are met. Um, again, in the same spirit of, of the last motion, I again see this as an opportunity for us to be more efficient, for people who wanna put work into this uh, outside of our regular meetings, uh, to uh, think about and to work in conjunction with the executive director. Um, there are really not a lot of things that we do outside of our monthly board meetings that are in conjunction with the executive director or, um, or other uh, uh, um, entities such as HUD and DHCD, uh, all of that. Um, these are things that, um, especially as we get um, more training and become much more um, interested in these, uh, in our financials, uh, this would be a great way to, even if we have to pay uh, Gary the Pace um, uh, to sit with us for an hour or two extra, you know, every few months, um, is, uh, I think, uh, um, a great way to uh, split the load, um, have folks participate um, in the decision making, particularly uh, those responsibility that are uh, financial and fiduciary um, of the authority. So um, that's pretty much um, where I'm at with that. And that's why I brought that up. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes, uh, I'm, I uh, ditto. Uh, what Commissioner Kunzel is uh, saying, guys, I just think uh, the more the no, the more you know, the better you are. And uh, I kind of, you know, I think that this is important. I, I, I don't want to even go into the two meetings, this two people thing, because I don't, don't think that's right. What I keep saying is there are people who know each other. You've been on city councils together. You know each other from this. And the, you know, not all of us do. Some of us have unique experiences, lived experiences. And we'd like to bring that forth. And so finance, just to be transparent, like ain't nothing, to, people have nothing to hide, have uh, hide nothing. Ain't nothing to see here, but, you know, paying the rent. 
You know, and it's interesting because I, I said the last time we had the meeting with Gary DePace, which I really appreciated. And I've been doing a lot of this on my own, trying to figure it out so we could get together and have a common language. But one of the things that I just wanted to say is that I'm so surprised that we're not using Excel. So that way we had one thing here. You can stop that there. You can see things here and be easier. You can blow it all up. We're looking at that things that's hurting my eyes or hurting eyes. Well, antiquated on that. So I don't understand why there is resistance for us getting together. You act in some ways, it's almost like, oh, we're going to get together and talk about stuff. I, that, that that worries me. When I first came on the meeting, I heard someone say something. It was a playground. Oh, uh, uh, the potentiality of people getting together. Oh, oh. I mean, come on, guys. We've already, you know, you do. If you break a, a, a open meeting law, the world won't come to an end. You can learn from that. And it happens a lot. It happens a lot even within here, even with the law you hear. So it's going to happen. That shouldn't be the pre precursor that we don't get together and talk about these things. And we won't keep it from the public. And as a matter of fact, I don't even see efforts of getting public and tenants involved with going on. I'd like for them to do so they could ask me questions about what's going on. So on one level, we want everybody here. But in reality, we, we don't. So it doesn't seem like it. Perhaps it is, but it doesn't seem like it from this standpoint. And I just don't understand the resistance of coming together. And it doesn't mean you can't come together in the group, but you get together and come up with a board to the group. I just don't know why one um, uh, uh, denounces another. And I just, I appreciate the uh, attorney's perspective, but I, I think that that, that, that that worries me. The potentiality, you know, oh, you could do this. Well, if we do it, we learn from that. Because it just happened in the uh, October 2nd meeting. The world is not going to come to an end. We learn from that. So I just think that that's kind of, let's grow and let's be inclusive and use diversity and equity because they're also in financial terms as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Richards and then Commissioner Cancel, is your hand still raised? Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Richards. And then back, well, before I go back to Commissioner Cancel, I'll just make sure that Commissioner Brooks doesn't have anything before we go back. So Commissioner Richards, please. Yes. Um... I noticed in uh, Commissioner Cancel's um, comments that he mentioned audit and participating in the audit. Uh, my experience with other organizations is that the finance committee members cannot participate in the right. audit. And I, I'm trying to find the law that says that, but I think that that's correct. It's it's correct. Okay, Commissioner Brooks, do you have anything to add on this matter before I go back to Commissioner? The finance, the, the finance committee that we had at Northampton Housing um, never met in my uh, in my memory. Um, it never met in my memory uh, when I when I was uh, when I was a met, just a resident here and went to every board meeting every month. So. Um, that's why, um, and Marilyn's um, comment just now is the reason why. Okay. Then finally, um, Commissioner Cancel again. Uh, yeah, no, I appreciate that comment, um, Commissioner Richards, and I'm not so necessarily interested in uh, audits, um, but again, I, I'm interested in um, folks being able to participate in as many um, uh, facets as possible um, that we have, that we can uh, as board uh, members. Um, and I'd also like to bring up um, the fact that um, to respond to attorney O'Connor's um, comments about, um, you know, concerns with open meeting law violations. Um, we've actually, thanks to our, our chair, have figured out a way to really either minimize or completely uh, avoid that um, in terms of our communications uh, uh, about agendas or uh, within uh, board members. Um, and that's the use the BCC um, feature when, uh, when communicating um, uh, with other members of the board. Um, so I don't, I don't buy the, um, the concern for more open meeting law violations. We've actually are learning a lot about that. And um, I, again, I think it's worth 
uh, the extra having to post a meeting and, uh, and, and, and there is uh, also the transparency that people can show up to those meetings. Um, of course, not as many people are gonna be interested in financials uh, as they are going to be in our regular monthly meetings, uh, but there are some people that might show up and might be interested. Um, and so, um, again, I just, I, I, I wanted to bring this out and just uh, uh, put it on the record that I believe this would be a, a good uh, way for us to be more efficient. And if folks don't want to do it, if folks don't want to do it, that's that's fine. Uh, we may, you know, want to revisit in the future, but um, at least I wanted to put it out there for the reasons that um, uh, uh, that we used to have them before and for the uh, other reasons that I mentioned. Uh, inclusion, uh, there's also, right, there's also a, uh, I hate to uh, bring it up and I'm not trying to be contentious, but there's a power struggle here, right? There's a power struggle. There's folks that uh, have come on board as of recent and want to participate and feel limited in a lot of ways. This would uh, alleviate uh, that as well. Hey, you want to work? We'll put you to work. So uh, I know that's how my teachers in school got me to uh, keep my grades up and stuff. They kept me busy. Um, and um, so anyways, uh, that's 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 an extra point I wanted to make on that. Thank you. Secretary Leeper. Yes, I just wanted to remind the board that it's not just about open meeting law violations in replying to emails. It means um, that our myself and my staff have to post the meetings within the OML guidelines. We have to make them available. We have to create the Zooms. We have to take the minutes. We have to type the minutes. We have to present the minutes for um, approval. Um, so it's not just about the um, emailing open meeting law violations. It's the whole open meeting law in and of itself. That's all I have to say. I'm, I know we need to get to the payment standards, Madam Chair. So um, I won't say any more. Thank you. Okay, so then I will ask if we can uh, call the question and ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Yes, this is an uh, met, uh, to amend the bylaws to reinstate the finance committee. Chairperson Carney. No. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Uh, no. Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Commissioner Richards. No. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's three nays and two yeas and one absent. Okay, then that motion does not carry. And we have one more motion under the, sorry, I'm trying to open it up here. I think it says to, oh, can you read that final motion, please? Sure, Secretary. it's uh, to cor correct the proposed Scribner's error, Scribner's errors in the board bylaws. So there were num num numerous Scribner's errors and numbering and categories um, that were out of, out of order and some typos. Um, so I just, I fixed those as well. Can you just clarify um, before I ask for that, for that motion, can you just clarify that? Um, I, I can't clarify. Was a pat. I just want you to clarify that that was part of the board resources that, that yes. document that, okay. Yes. So, so if, if folks are wondering what, um, what do, the, the document that has all the Scribner's errors corrected is in part of the board resources. So right. if you haven't seen that, that that's there, but it really is just, you know, putting in the, uh, uh, correcting any misspellings or, or grammatical commas here and there. And um, so I'll ask first, is there a motion? Can we put this on the floor? Could someone move to put this on the floor? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Cancel. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded to accept, to amend the bylaws with the attached uh, Scribner's errors corrected. And yes, so I have people, I have, I, I don't know who raised their hand first about the Scribner's errors. Are you, uh, uh, Commissioner Cancel, are you wanting to comment on the Scribner's errors amendment? I am uh, unfortunately I stuck with my hand up. I can't lower it. My Oh, okay. Okay. Um, then I'll just, yeah, I'm I'll good. Just check with you. 
Okay, on the Scrivener's errors, Commissioner Turban. Yeah, I uh, I would like to have a paper copy of it. I've asked since September if I could have that information here in addition to the computer stuff so I could read what we're talking about in particular. Um, and I was oh. just confused as to who proofreads this before it's submitted. Because I remember going through something like that when we were having the ARPA grant. It was like, we need to update it. And there were some errors and some information that were outdated. So I would like to have that in hand and maybe uh, participate in proofread. Okay, so does that mean that you would like this to be continued around the Scrivener's errors till the next meeting until you can get a, a printout of the um, document? I, I would like that. I've asked, yes, I'd okay. like that. I've so asked um, that. there's a motion. I'm assuming Commissioner Tarbon is making a motion to continue this to the next meeting. Is there a second? Crickets. <laughs> Okay, I would. Oh, somebody, somebody want to second that? Okay. Well, right, so I, no I don't, second. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I don't know what the motion was. She wants to continue voting, continue this matter about the Scrivener's Errors Amendment until she has a copy in paper. She has. She wants to have a paper copy to review before she votes on it. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't see a second. So we I'll will second. then. I'll second. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, moved yeah. and seconded to sure. continue until the next meeting this matter of the Scrivener's Errors Amendment. All those in favor are call the roll, please. Yes. Uh, motion to continue. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Uh, Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. <laughs> Yes. Is that anonymous? Uh, Commissioner, Com Commissioner Richards. You're muted, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that is anonymous. So let's move on to new business. Unanimous. Unanimous. <laughs> unanimous. It's an anonymous uh, unanimity. And <laughs> the resolution first under new business is the to adopt the fiscal year 2024 payment standards which will be effective December 1st of 2023 uh first I'll ask if that can be if there's a motion to approve motion to approve is there a second second okay so uh director leaper that's moved and seconded could you explain that to the uh, commissioners? Yes, uh, resolution 2023-09 is for the 2024 payment standards. The payment standard is the maximum monthly rental assistance that the agency can pay to a landlord who rents to a family that has been issued a Section 8 voucher. HUD allows a public housing authority to set up a payment standard of up to 110% of the fair market rent. We currently have a waiver through December of 2023, which allows us to establish a payment standard of up to 120%, which you have all elected to do. In the event HUD does not extend the waiver, we would go back to the 110%, which is the maximum allowed. Questions um, from commissioners? Okay, hearing none, I'll ask then if the secretary will call the roll. Yes, uh, resolution 202309, adopt the fiscal year 2024 payment standards effective 123123. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. I'm going to abstain on this. I haven't had enough chance to study it particularly. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, four yeas and one abstention. Thank you. And um, finally, under new business, there is a resolution regarding the open meeting law violation. <clears throat> and um, I'll ask first for the secretary to read that resolution in motion and then ask if there is a yes, motion. So, yes, so on... Um, on uh, Thursday, September 28th, um, I had sent an email out um, announcing um, the press release and us, you know, being awarded over $3 million. Um, uh, I received a reply all uh, from uh, Commissioner Richards. Um, 
uh, that included everyone on the board and therefore created an open meeting violation. Although she almost immediately replied again, sent a reply to just me saying that she um, inadvertently hit reply all on the press release. It was only intended to me to to be to me. Um, she and wanted me to know I was required to file an open meeting law uh, violation, uh, to which I did on September 28th. Um, and it's the same exact uh, thing that happened before. Um, I did self-report. I did receive um, the, an email from um, the uh, attorney general's office. Um, thank you for the transparency and sending us the self-reporting complaint. However, you're not required to send it. We will log this, uh, but will not perform any further action unless you want us to. Please let us know if you have any questions. And what we told them was, is that we would release the email that was the reply all in addition to the complaint um, as part of the following month's minutes once it is uh, approved by the board. So Madam Chair, what I'm asking for is that the board make a motion to one, um, uh, uh, ask, uh, the commissioner to take the OML training again, and to um, allow me to um, to attach the complaint and the emails uh, in in public format as part of the minutes. Okay, can I have a motion then from the floor? Is there someone would move to approve the resolution as as spoken by the secretary? Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Discussion. Any discussion? Yes, Commissioner Cancel. Um, yeah, I would. Um, I would um, uh, approve this uh, motion uh, just with with a, a, a very uh, friendly amendment uh, to include all board members and the executive director to attend open meeting law um, uh, training. Okay, that was made as a friendly amendment to the maker of the motion and the second. So the maker of the motion was Commissioner Brooks. Do you accept that as a friendly amendment to change that wording to be? Sure, sure. Okay. And the second, I think, was Commissioner Cancel anyway, right? So mm -hmm. you're, yeah. So so that, so that then that I'll ask now we need to, and I think, I don't think we need to call the roll on this. I think I can ask for show of hands for those that would accept that friendly amendment. It looks like it's anonymous. Okay, so then that just is the same motion, but it includes all, all members and the executive director to attend an open meeting law training. And Commissioner Tarbutton, yes. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I like the word of friendly amendment because I think that on the regular, like I'm talking about groups and us getting together, I think on the regular we should do it. I attend every month of uh, those meetings. And not only by the Attorney General's office, I also get the perspective from the Massachusetts Municipal Employees. And uh, that's very helpful. It's not anything completely new, but it's good to be in there while I'm knitting, which I don't. I, I turn it on and I listen and participate. And I think I've been in on one where Rich, uh, Commissioner Richards and probably ED was on there at one time. I'm, maybe I was wrong, but maybe not. But I think it's just a good, always keeping stuff going, uh, keeping us fresh with what's going on. You always hear something different. But I just think when I did that once and I was with Driscoll once and I said, well, I'm going to uh, self-report myself just for replying all. He said, you don't usually do that. That's not a case. So that's why I'm telling you guys, I was just so shocked to see that people did that with a, a fellow commissioner before and made it this big deal. And it seems like, well, we got to do this because we did that to that. But I just didn't think that that was uh, grounds. And if somebody says, oops, I made a mistake or oops, I'm in an airport, I hit this by mistake. We make mistakes. I, I never want to go on life being a, afraid to make a mistake because I think I learned from that. I just think that, <laughs> I appreciate that. I do appreciate that we can all do that. I think learning is fun, but you know, I don't want to put a rider on this, but I just saw something happen like that with the open meeting violation. And uh, I, I would ask that the whole board take a look. It's not a rider, take a look at it because I know what I heard, know what I saw. So I think that we are trying to get standards that make us in compliance because we've been fined before many times. So I think twice that I know of. So let's get this straight. And I think that 
when you self-report, I do think the thing is you could put uh, an email to yourself and put BCC on everybody and eliminate that. Why are we going through that? Sometimes I have big fingers if I'm doing it on the phone. That's why I like to have my email and all my stuff together when I'm doing business so I don't make that mistake. We shouldn't go around watching our P's and Q's on that. So I think that this is a good step. I appreciate people admitting when they do something. And, um, you know, it's it's all right. We'll, we'll get through it. Commissioner Richards? Yes, I just wanted to say I did it. <laughs> and um, there is a open meeting law training. I do, do believe on, I can't find it this minute, on November the 2nd, which I intend on going to. There's also one on the sixth. Maybe it was the sixth. Yeah. I, yeah. I'll just yeah, ask. I can't I'll find just it ask, right um, I'll just ask the secretary to please um, send those upcoming dates um, with with all of the board blind CC, please, so we don't make this mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I appreciate uh, everybody's willingness to um, attend to the open meeting law training. Um, Madam Chair, I know you recently yeah. took the uh, OML training. Can you tell me if they provided you with a certificate? Because when I took it last, they provided me with one, but I didn't know if you guys got any when I you... don't... we did. Okay. They, yeah. they, sent, they sent me an email, like an email confirmation that I participated. Yes. Right. They did something like that. I got so one. And if I got one a million have... years ago. Yeah. If you, any of you have a recent one, if you could just forward it to me, that would be great. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. And Madam Chair, I'm sorry, did you ask me to call the roll? I can't remember. Yeah, please just call okay, the roll. Sure. Yes, uh, um, so this is uh, to request the commissioner that uh, violate the OML to attend the OML training um, with the friendly amendment that all board and the ED attend the OML training um, and provide documentation of attendance. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you, Vice Chairperson Kensell. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, five yeas and one absent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Then that motion carries. And it looks like we've reached the end of the agenda. So I will ask for okay. a final motion from someone from the floor, if they'd be so willing. I'll make a motion to uh, adjourn. Second. Is there a second? Uh, yes, I, I, no. yes, I missed it then, uh, didn't I? Is that yep. a second by Roy Martin? Yeah. I think that was a second by Roy Martin. I'm sorry, but I, I'm sorry, Roy, but we can't take your second. Is there someone else who could offer yeah, a second? You, you got a second from uh, uh, Commissioner Richards. Okay, thank you. And that's non-debatable. So uh, that means that the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.